Bobby, and she broke down in tears, saying that she wanted to kill her three children. And she she said that wasn't me. It was the medication that she was on. And a lot of this medication, if you look at the side effects, is suicide. Look at all the mass shootings. Try to find one person that wasn't on a antidepressant. No. Try to find one person that wasn't on an antidepressant. Mm. On these mass shootings, you find consistently that on these medications that uh, cause in their brain to completely cut off with the empathy parts of the brain that would prevent you from doing what you would otherwise not even imagine. Okay, so there are herbs that we can take for depression. So John's Wood is a very good one to take. So is um, the herb oat straw. Oat straw is also good for depression. I'll talk more about that later. Um, and then you have other herbs such as bacopa, B-A-C-O-P-A, and ginkgo biloba, ginkgo, G-I-N. G-K-O, the letter B-I-L-O-D-A, these are very good for, for depression. Um, some herbs are not recommended for, uh, for consumption, like green tea is the most consumed tea in the world today. You know uh, I lived in Japan for a couple of years, and it was a religion in Japan. You know, if, um, you, you, you couldn't go to the Japanese home without a, a cup of tea serving. And I grew up in England. England is a tea drinking country. I started drinking tea when I was four years of age. But there are some good things about it, and there's some bad things about it. It is true, it's my point of view. If you go online, you'll read Macaulay after Macaulay about green tea. But, what you need to know is some side effects to it. It's high in aluminum, depending on what tea, where it's from. High in tannin is a block down absorption, can lead to anemia, especially for ladies. It's also high in fluoride. Some of the European varieties of tea have up to 300 plus percent of fluoride. Fluoride is one of the biggest contributors to cancer in the United States. Uh, Mm -hmm. It kills over 40,000 people every year from cancer in the United States. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, sorry, that's a, a typo. It's 20 to 50 milligrams of caffeine per cup, which is about half of a Starbucks coffee. And it's not sound GABA. You know what GABA is? GABA and butyric acid. It's a neurotransmitter. It's like having no brakes on a car. If you have no GABA, people who are drunk, they lose GABA, and that's why they say things they wouldn't normally say, they do things they wouldn't normally do, because they don't have the inhibition molecule to suppress that. And so green tea drinking causes the same problem. So that's why you find in all the tea drinking nations, you'll find that culturally they, they don't have much independent thought outside the culture. In other words, it's very hard for them to go outside of their cultural norms. Yeah, because GABA is blanket. Right? So they're more traditional and go along with the crowd. Uh, there's exceptions to that, but this is just a general, general um, observation. And then we have uh, uh, anyone had hibiscus tea before? No. Yeah, isn't that nice? No. Yes. All right. You can take hibiscus in hot weather, cold weather. It's very nice as a cool drink, refreshing drink. Very good for the blood, high in antioxidants. Okay, it helps with blood pressure, lowest blood pressure. It's good for blood cleansing in the body. Uh, it's very refreshing, very calming, it's high in anti-inflammatories, high in antioxidants, and uh, it's very good, supported with a high, a high vitamin C, 
So I don't really recommend hibiscus. This is aloe vera. Every house should have an aloe vera plant. Mm -hmm. If you get good, I, I forgot how many times we've had to use aloe vera because uh, my kids get good, my wife gets good in the tap, and, and you just slice and leave. And then you wrap it around that area, and within seconds, the pain goes away. It's very cooling. Uh, anything for the GI tract is benefited by it out here. Now, there are some tens uh, in this skin that if you get too close to the skin, it can cause diarrhea. So you just want to stay within this area here. All right? And uh, uh, it's, it's, it's very healing. It's very good for me to move rays. It can help if you've got constipation. Um, if you, if you took too much, you can leave the diary, so just be aware of that. And uh, it's one of the best things, actually, for the skin. Uh, and if you want to improve the quality of the skin, aloe vera. Uh, Cleopatra was known to use aloe vera for her skin, keep her youthful. I don't know what she looked like, but tradition says she was the most beautiful woman. <laughs> uh, my wife was my most beautiful woman. <laughs> uh, will help everyone. That's it. All right, so uh, calendula. Calendula is very good for the skin. Uh, calendula, C A L E N D U L A. Or calendula, some people say calendula. Calendula uh, officinalis. Or calendula officinalis is the botanical name. And this is extremely good for psoriasis, eczema. Uh, inflamed skin, burned skin, damaged skin. You can use this for poison ivy, uh, poison oak. Uh, any allergic outbreaks in the skin, you can use this for. It's very healing. The only thing I found that didn't work on was uh, cellulitis. That's the only thing I found that didn't work that well. But everything else has worked very successful. I talked about this before, Client Pepper. Um, it's, it's hot stuff, but there are some other benefits to it. it. It's very good for headaches and migraines, uh, flu, colds. If you want to lose weight, it even helps improve metabolism and lose weight. You can uh, put this into a little pint jar with oil and put it in a rock pot, leave it overnight, and you get that infused oil. And you can rub that in your fire plan, it will improve fire activity. Can you spell that, please? Cayenne? Oh, I didn't hear you. Okay. Yeah, this is kind So, um, we use between, I say, 90 to 160,000 e units. All right. Uh, one day I was flying from America to Japan, and uh, it was a 15 hour flight. And my feet were, you know how you sit down all the time, your, your feet get a little cold, circulation is, isn't there. So I had a kind of stab, so I got some of the stab and I put it on my feet, and I waited about 20 minutes and nothing happened. So I thought, well, maybe I just didn't put enough on. So I got some more, put, put, covered my feet really good, and uh, nothing happened 20 minutes. So maybe this is old, you know, it's been sitting around for a long time, so maybe I should just put some more on. So I got some more, I just really lavished everything. Well, what I didn't realize at the time was that sweating activates the heat problems. So I get off the plane, I didn't feel anything for the next few hours, but I get off the plane and I start walking. And I'm sweating. I'm feeling a little warm. <laughs> my feet are warm. I keep walking, no big deal. My feet are hot. My feet are burning. <laughs> my feet are burning.
Okay. All right, I think we'll take care of it. But, you know, perfect health depends on perfect circulation. The best way to improve uh, any condition, to get any condition to improve, is to improve blood flow. That's how the body heals. The life is in the blood. All right? So, just facilitate better blood flow. That's the best way to improve any condition of getting well. That's how the body repairs. It's through the blood. All right, let's look at uh, Jamaican dogwood. Anyone heard of Jamaican dogwood before? No. Yeah, this is an amazing herb. Uh, we use this for pain. This is the best thing I've found for pain, even compared to all the pain meds in the market. You know, the pain meds that you have, your doctor gives you, do not lessen pain. They increase your tolerate, tolerance to pain. Do you understand the difference? Okay, so, so basically, you've got more resilience to pain. And so when that medication goes away, you need more pain meds. Okay? And it's a cycle. I learned this from a pain doctor. He said, if at all possible, don't get on it in the first place. If at all possible. Alright, now I'm not talking about a tragedy like you have a car accident and they want to give me some more pain, I'll, I'll take it. But, you know, we're talking about using it for chronic diseases. Because when you get on that cycle, you know, this is what destroys the kidneys, the liver, and then it wipes you out. And you're on every inhibitor of medication. Mm -hmm. And it just gets worse and worse. So, one day I had a text message from a lady. She was the wife of a friend of mine. He just had an accident. He was at home, uh, had a circular saw, and he was cutting a piece of wood with one hand with a circular saw. Well, not a good idea. And it went back on him, went straight into his groin, and it severed his skirt. This is where all the men crossed their legs. And it did a lot of damage. It was one millimeter away from severing his femoral artery. So his wife comes home, this, this blue tape, you know, the police blue and yellow tape around the house, there's blood on the floor. Whisk him away to the emergency. He's in absolute agony. So I get this message. And I'm like, well, if it were me, I would want at least two things. You know, I, I, if one fails, I want a bad guy. So I send him some pain formula, which you make the dog with. I also send him some CBD oil, which came from him. And so he started taking this. I get a text, I think it was a day, maybe two after. He said, thank you so much for sending that to me. He said, better than all the pain medications. He was off all his pain medication, and he was back to work a few days later. Oh, wow. And, and I mean, it, it's not going to surgically fix things, but the pain he was going through that really helped him get through that experience. Uh, we've used it for neuralgia, for tooth pain, for cancer pain, for uh, arthritic pain. We've had people like rolling on the floor in pain. And this has been a tremendous help to them. Yes? Can, can you use it continually for a pain or do you stop? You, you, you can. Uh, I probably wouldn't use it more than uh, several weeks. Uh, now, now, let me, this brings out a good point. Have you ever used a remedy and it worked initially and then over time it lost its effect? Okay, so here's what you can do to help with that. You take a day off the week and that will resensitize your body to the herb. So it's like if, you, if, you, if the body has all these chem, chemicals in it 24 7, it's like, it's like living with your in laws 24 7. You, you, you need a break, you know, to have a healthy situation. So, so we need a day off, day off a week to resensitize the body to the herd. And so that can continue to have its effect. Okay, so what we do, it, it's from the bark, by the way. So, I, I didn't show it here, this is actually the flower, but we use the bark and uh, we 
but this is how we make it. Uh, we, we teach people how to do it at home as well. But we, we combine this with turmeric root, we use a little bit of licorice root, and we use um, uh, devil's claw and a touch of cayenne just to improve facilitation and bioavailability. And so uh, we have a bed press, we cook it for two days, and then we press it under nearly 10,000 pounds of pressure, and then we get everything out of that. When you touch the head, it's completely dry. You don't feel any moisture or everything out of that. And uh, then we, we use glycerin, water and glycerin to extract. And so that, that's the process. So Jamaican dogwood is the primary ingredient in that formula. Um, then we have uh, lemon balm. All right, lemon balm is another very supportive thing to the body. It uh, has very good effects for the brain health. Um, it's good to promote relaxation. Some people use it for sleep. Uh, it's one of the top herbs used for sleep. It also is very good if you have a hyperactive thyroid gland. All right, if you have hyperthyroidism, you can use, it will actually suppress thyroid action. Uh, it's also very good for viruses, especially herpes virus. It helps with that. Um, it's good for as antioxidant. It helps support blood sugar levels, uh, good for pain inflammation. And uh, it's very uh, tasty, actually. It's, it's a very nice flavor. Uh, it can even help with cancer. Um, and then we have this, this here, actually. Uh, does anyone, anyone know what this herb is? If you, if you know, if you can guess it, I'll give you a bottle of No, it's not that bad. Then you're great. No, it's one wort. One wort. One wort. Uh, one wort. The, the uh, botanical name is Pomonaria officialis. There are different types of lungwort. Now, this lungwort is extremely good for helping support the respiratory system. Okay, now, what I'm going to tell you here is, is a testimony. I don't have any science to back this up. Okay, I just want to make that clear. I haven't found any. There may be some out there, I haven't found any. But I had a lady, she had a condition similar to fibrosis. She had 85% of the lungs damaged. Wasn't working completely like fibrous tissue. And uh, doctors gave her a short time to live. Uh, she was not a smoker, this lady, not a smoker. And she didn't want a few months to live. She wanted to live as long as possible. So I said to her, Look, the best herb I know for lungs is lung water, but I don't know how effective it's going to be. And I just want to make it clear that even though it may work for someone, it may not work for everyone, all right? So, we're not at the tree of life yet, okay? So, there are some herbs, I would, I would say just generally we have between 85-90% success rate using herbs generally for, for their conditions. But there's always people that may not respond, okay? So, I'm not saying this is a cure-all. However, in this particular case, she started using this for a few weeks. She went back to the doctor, and the doctor was shocked. He saw a new lung tissue in her. And lung tissue does not grow back. You know that, right? So um, I'm just telling the story, what she told me. She was so thrilled. The doctor was so shocked <laughs> that she. She was just over the moon. She was just so happy. So, yes, she had uh, She was first. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. How do you make that into tea? Oh, you can make it into tea. Mm -hmm. This is the leaf you can use. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We, it's hard to get a hold of. I'll be honest with you. It's even hard for me to get a hold of. And I eat five herbs all the time. Uh, it's it's quite expensive. It's probably about $9 an ounce. It's it's five it's um, we we get a leaf, we make it into an extract. I don't know who was first. How do you spell that? Love word? How do you spell it? Now we mentioned W O R T. Yes. What about pleurisy root? I know that. Pleurisy root, yes. 
Yes, I've yes. been used to a pneumonia, a pleurisy. Uh, yes, no, I've never used it. 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 It works. Okay, very good. But uh, let me share with something with you. Most of us study a, a thousand to two thousand curves really well. Um, but in practice, we may be use a hundred to two hundred. Okay. So when I'm sharing about these particular herbs, it's because I'm most familiar with them. Okay. But it doesn't negate all the other herbs that are good out there that maybe you're using, I'm not using, but if they're working, praise the Lord. And so uh, don't feel like if I left something out, it's because I don't believe it. There's a lot of other herbs we study that I don't have time to share. Yes. Uh, well, my question is your question, but it does grow in these parts. Yes, 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 yes. This, you should be able to grow this in your backyard. Now, if you don't have that, you will find this. This is very common. This is mullen. Yes, yes. Okay, uh, you don't, you get the, the leaf. Don't use the, uh, uh, the seeds of toxic. Understand what you said. What is but this is mullen. 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 And mullen is very good as a bronchodilator. It's picolaginous. It's very good for soothing the, the bronchioles. Um, very good for acid. This is one of the best pieces for acid. Okay. Any C COPD conditions, you could try using some mullen to improve oxygenation. Oh, by the way, I, uh, I'll tell you another story about this little boy. This happened to us personally. At the, around the time of COVID, my wife and I, we traveled through New York, upstate New York, on our way to, to Maine. And we, it was the last day you could get a hotel. And so my wife and I, we stayed at this hotel. And both of us had lost our sense of taste and smell. And then, on top of that, my wife couldn't breathe well. She was, she was in a, a bad state. So I told her to take lung wood. And uh, within a few hours, it started to work and she was fine the next day. So, so, Lung wort is very good for oxygenating the body. Okay, it's helpful for improving oxygen saturation rates. It's a rocket diamond. So, uh, if you have the respiratory conditions, it's not like life threatening, but it's just something that you want to see if you can relieve. Try, try it one. Okay. And you said that was healing too. Yes. This. Look, I don't know. If this. Sometimes you don't know if it's a miracle. Now, miracles do happen, right? Yeah. Now, I believe ultimately God is the healer. Amen. Yes. But sometimes things happen that you can't explain. That go beyond what the plant you know can do. Yeah. And so in that book, well, it, it may be the plant has some properties that can help with that. I don't know. Either way, it would give God the glory. But at the same time, science is always behind inspiration. Okay. Yes, yes. So did your wife take it in the form of tea? She took it as an extract. So an extract. Yes, yes that's right. Now, uh, hang on, the other next chapter we're going to have skull castle is another excellent herb you can use. It's a turbine, uh, it's very relaxing. Some people use it for sleep, some people use it to help with um, diabetes. Uh, it's good for removing toxins out of the body. And you can use this for a lot of nervous conditions. In fact, uh, there's a condition. Okay, do you know anyone that has um, um, seizures? Okay, try skull cap. See if that doesn't help. Well, okay. Now, this is a herb, a common herb. Does anyone know what this is? 
Comfrey. Comfrey, very good. Um, yes, he means his comfrey. Now, if if you uh, if you don't want to look, now's the time to look away. I have a picture. Next picture is an open wood. So if you don't want to see an open wood, uh, this is a before and after picture. Okay. So on the left here, this guy had diabetes type two. Uh, I have a lot of interesting pictures that people send me on my phone. I hope my phone doesn't get stolen one day. Uh, yeah. I've got people send me pictures of cauliflowers coming out of their chest and all kinds of balloons and cancer and all kinds of things. So this is a picture of a guy who had a very serious open wound that was directly related to diabetes. So I told him, I said, look, if you do this, you have to do it properly. You make sure you clean the wound, there's no underlying infection, and then you put on some comfrey, comfrey leaves. So you get the comfrey leaf, and you put it in hot water, and then you take it out of hot water and get it rolling in. And you just macerate, macerate, you just, just, Get that thing up. You want to squeeze the juice out, and then you put that over the wound. So he was doing that. This on the right here is the same leg, but it was several weeks later. So you can see it's not completely healed. There's still an open area there, but that's just just in a short time using comfrey, um, he was able to get on top of that. So. Comfrey is very good for pain, it's very good for if you break a bone. It has a chemical called alum common, it stimulates the uh, bone cells that produce more bone matrix. It, it helps stimulate those so that it is a new, new growth that's taking place. Um, so comfrey works very fast. If you buy a comfrey plant like this big, in two weeks it's just big. Alright, so it's a very fast growing. Good. Now you, I, I wouldn't say this, uh, online herbalists aren't deep enough to say this because the, the, the information you see online, do not take it internally. Oh. Alright, do not take it internally. Now when I was in Michigan, it was illegal for me to sell comfort. Wow. I could, I could sell marijuana, but I couldn't sell comfort. <laughs> Right. Uh, what's that? It's too big. It's not enough. No, it's not. It's, well, it's because of pyrolysine and alkaloids. These are, these are chemicals, now pyrolysine and alkaloids, uh, chemicals that are in about 3,000 different herbs. There are 10 different kinds of them, and they all vary in toxicity. And so they believe that the pyrolysine alkaloids will destroy your liver because there were four clinical cases done back in the 1980s. Two in America, one in England, I think the other one was in New Zealand. And so they used those clinical cases to justify the yeah. FDA going into healthy stores and wiping the clean of comfrey, making it illegal to be in my comfrey. Okay, so in my opinion, I don't have a problem with comfrey. I think it's very effective. Uh, but you don't want to use it topically unless you deal with the infection before that or the abscess. It, it heals so quickly sometimes, it's, it's amazing. It, it just, you just have to be very careful that you, you use it in a correct way because uh, it can create an abscess that you don't want to have to deal with later on. So that's comfrey. Um, it's good for sprains, it's good for muscle pains, it's good for strained tendons, uh, uh, it's good for cartilage as well. So you can use that. And this is lavender. Alright, if you ever stress, just go and feel the lavender and all your stress will go away. Alright? Now there are 400 different types of lavender. I used to have people come in my store and they would say, I need lavender for. Uh, sleep. And I uh, said, well, what kind of lavender are you looking for? I said, well, I don't know. I just saw the lavender. <laughs> the most common lavender I saw is spike lavender, or lavender. 
it's a stimulant, it will keep you awake, but don't not use that for sleep. <laughs> Lavender oil, fish and oil, this is what you want to use for. Lavender oil and gussy foliage, it's the same thing. Uh, just a different thing, but that's the lavender, it's very relaxing. Um, it has a high amount of body chemistry, it's anti antibiotic, it helps with uh, sleep depression, anxiety, panic attacks, all kinds of things. And it works very, very quickly sometimes. The English lavender? Yes, that's the English lavender, or Bulgarian lavender. It's the same lavender. Yes. They hybridize lavender, so it's a lot of difference. All right, then we have fever fever. Anyone better fever fever? What do you think it's good for? What does the name say? Fever fever. Fever fever, right? Fevers, headaches, uh, migraines. That's where it, it helps the most. All right, so it's very similar. It's part of the daily family. It looks very similar to Panama. Uh, in fact, we forget what the reason was in the but this is voted as the best herb for migraines. Migraines. And then we have uh, uh, a mission calendar. What's the name of it? This is also known as Palm Marigold. Palm Marigold, by the way, is working in the backyard and it will keep away the pets. We're growing some right now, actually, in our garden. And it will keep away the bugs. And if you get bit by insects or you get stung by anything, just use some calendula. It works very, very effective. It's good for the complexion. It's good for fungus. Uh, it's good for uh, even. What's that? I couldn't catch that one. Calendula. Calendula. C A. Yes, C C A L E N D U L A. U L A. Uh, or pop, pop marigold. There's 14 different types of marigold. This is one variety of marigold. Oh. You can make creams. You can make herbal creams. Anyone interested in, in making these things? No, mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. well, we, we put together a, a short course. It was 70 videos teaching you how to make all these things. Creams, salves, extracts, uh, pretty much what most of our recipes already put online to teach you how to do it in your own home, so you don't have to keep buying from us. Uh, so if you want to learn how to do it, we'll come and see me and we'll, we'll uh, give you the information to be able to do it. And then, um, uh, I reckon the grape root. This is one of the very best antibacterial herbs out there. Oregon grape root. Now, I used to have a lot of people come into my store and they take an antibiotic and two weeks later they're back in with another infection. Right? You know what you know why that happened? Yes. The antibiotic. It does the job. Kills the bacteria. But it and destroys the immune system. So then the person's a city duck for another infection. Amen. You know, antibiotics are given out in doctors' offices. I mean, there's so many people who get an antibiotics. Now, is there a time and place? Yeah, there can be a time and place if it's very serious and you've got nothing else to use. But why not use something like Oregon Green? You know, MRSA, antibiotics won't touch MRSA. But if you use Oregon Green Root with an antibiotic, then the MRSA basically doesn't get pumped out. The antibiotic that doesn't get pumped out of the mercy, it destroys it. You know why they're not making any more antibiotics? It's because the antibiotics that get stronger make stronger superbugs. So, all you're doing is basically perpetuating more resilient. Bacteria for future generations. The right. R in MRSA is resistant. Yes, that's right. So uh, I read a book once on uh, on bacteria. These guys are so intelligent. Bacteria so intelligent. <coughs> they can come up with combinations of antibiotics that the labs haven't even made. It. And they they formulate their DNA around 
possible combinations that can be put together in a lab based upon their exposure to certain chemicals. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. And then they bite up, they pass that information onto their offspring and other bacteria, and uh, you get more resilient bacteria. So why not use things like this? Oregon grapefruit, we use this for our super meat formula. We combine it with a scrapage fruit, we combine it with gold seed, we combine it with echinacea. It works very effectively. Echinacea is great. Uh, this, anyone know what this is? This is Alberry. I have said. So. <laughs> At a church once doing a program, and a guy came up to me afterwards. He said, I'm Alberry. I said, What? He said, Yeah, I'm Alberry. So he was the remedy. <laughs> so, uh, this is very good for viruses. Now, in every bio, major modern viral pandemic, Alberry has been recommended. Except, uh, and why is that? Why is that? This is a good question. Why is that? Why is that? Yeah. Well, I'm not going to lie to me, figure it out. <laughs> you can figure it out. You can figure it out. I'm blaming you. But it's not an elderberry. It's not an elderberry. I sell it the elderberry. So it could prevent you from taking something, something the government recommends you. Yeah. That's right. You wouldn't want that. When I heard of the big C coming, the big C coming, when I heard it was coming, I bought as much of as I could. Ah. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was $11 a pound when I bought it. It went up to $11 a pound in a few weeks. Is it possible? You couldn't get it. You couldn't get it because people like me were buying nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then they came out with this science literature saying it was so funny. Don't take elderberry, it could, could cause a cytokine yeah. storm. Yeah. If we can actually study, it didn't even say that. Yeah. It causes a cytokine response. Every infection causes a cytokine response because you want cytokines involved in the immune signaling to get the white blood cells into that localized area and clean up the infection. So anything that's helpful for is going to improve cytokine, but it's not going to cause a cytokine storm. Even in the article, they never even said that. But that was put before the public. That's what was sold to, through the media. But if just whatever the media says, turn it upside down. I know, and yeah. That is what the truth is. Amen. All right. Uh, it's incredible what they do to keep us in ignorance. All right. Let's take it. Let's, let's take another ten minute break, and uh, we'll come back. We've got a few more, a few more slides here. And then we will uh, have some Q&A talks, all right? So we're going to cover a few more groups and then we'll have some Q&A talks. Seven. 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 Seven.